It's just miles of old tracks, bush and old trees far as the eye can see. Where's all this Aboriginal art the lecturers kept bitching about? I mean, did they make the art and hide it? Why make something if you're just going to put it in some obscure place? Sometimes to succeed as an artist, you have to stray away from the beaten path and make one of your own. You're an artist once you've created something, not once you've sold it. You don't need any credit from anyone else, because you've created an artwork. You've left your own impact on the world, and no one can take that away from you. But Connor wasn't listening. His hazel eyes glued to the sight before him as he approached the mural. Connor felt something stir within him that he hadn't felt for a long time. Those paintings seemed to be moving. Breathing, laughing, dancing across the rock face. The serpent Guriala, its brilliant rainbow scales glistening like a sterling diamond in the sunlight. The fat faced Nagalindi, his portly belly swaying to and fro as he fled from his vengeful wives. That greedy frog to the left, his bulbous citron eyes lazy as his friends tried in vain to make him laugh. And of course, the wily koala and the starfish, pursued by the wounded whales that fled to their five islands. The Wollongong. The Wollongong. So many stories painted and carved into these rocks. Old fables predating half the trees and species in this forest. Right here, radiating new life as though they've been painted seconds ago. Such dazzling colours, care and stalwart passion put to every smear and stroke of those pictures. Connor could almost reach out and touch them. The two sauntered up the dirt track, silent as the mirrors they turned away from.